Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about one of the fundamentals of golf, the control of the lowest point in your swing. One of the most important things to understand in order to be able to help yourself to play better golf. I think we all know that you should be hitting the golf ball in the downswing when you're hitting your irons to get a good compression on the golf ball and a better energy transfer on it. Similarly, we know that to get the golf ball to roll well, you should be hitting it in the upswing with your putter and to get it to fly further with the driver and roll further, you want to be hitting it in the upswing as well, which means getting the deepest point in your golf swing in front of the ball and hitting the golf ball in the up. Again, if we're talking about the low point in the swing, just think of the basic path that the club head is following up, down, around and up, and wherever the lowest point in the swing is, that is what we call the low point. That should be a couple of centimeters after the golf ball uh, if you're hitting an iron, and maybe a couple of centimeters in front of the golf ball if you're hitting a driver. At the same time, it can be more if you wanted to hit it more in the downswing, more in the upswing, but what we're talking about today is understanding how to control that position and what controls that position. The first thing is to understand one of the major problems we have in golf, which comes from a good grip. A good grip will actually sometimes make golf more difficult. When we grip the golf club, we should have the ball of the lead hand on top of the club. What this tends to do is create an angle between the club shaft and the arm. And you will see this angle in virtually all professional golfers, with maybe the exception of Bryson DeChambeau. The reason that Bryson doesn't do that is that he's trying to get rid of as many variables as possible. And one of those variables is what we call ulnar deviation. If I start with my hand in this position, in the address position, then it's likely that the weight of the, of the golf club is going to pull the arm down and therefore change the angle. Why does this actually determine or make it a problem when we're talking about the low point? Well, quite simply, if the club was the length so that my, the end would basically be able to swing around an arc above my wrist, then there would be no chance of me hitting the ground. However, if I grip the club longer, so that there is a slight angle here between my arm and my shaft. When I allow the club now to fall to the ground, it catches the ground in front of the ball. So the low point has moved behind the ball. Why? Simply because the forces of nature are pulling the club down and causing the wrist to go up, trying to make a, a straight line between your lead arm and the club, and there's just not enough room. What would happen then to an amateur golfer who does this and is quite simple. Either they're going to stand up to make room, or they're going to pull the club in to make room so they don't hit the ground. What happens then? They top the golf ball, all their mates say, the reason you didn't hit it is you didn't start, you stood up too early. The reason you didn't hit it is that you bent your arms. You should keep your arms straight. And as soon as they follow their advice, they start hitting into the ground again. The reason that they're hitting into the ground is the club is too long when they take their address position. Unless they start to apply another force to the club, moving the club and particularly the grip end of the club, towards the target. Allowing the club to fall and moving the grip end towards the target will delay the extension of the club, using the club's weight and its inertia to delay the, the angle in your lead arm being straightened out and hitting the ground. If the movement of the arm is intense enough, you can actually see that the lowest point suddenly moves past the ball. If I just let it fall, I hit the ground before the ball. A little bit of action, it gets closer, more action, I'm actually at ball height, and even more action, I don't hit the ground at all. 
because we're moving the low point in the arc further forward towards the target. All wonderful if you're playing with one arm. If, however, you have, by chance, a second hand on the golf club, things get difficult because you are going to find it difficult to move your arms towards the target without bending your arms, which are going to have the effect of pulling the club towards you again and topping the golf ball. So here you're stuck unless you start to turn your shoulders. Turning your shoulders similarly to moving the arm actively forward does exactly the same thing. Because the lead arm is attached to the shoulder, if the shoulder rotates to the left and up behind you for a right-handed golfer, obviously, the arm will be swung out and away and it will move the low point in your swing forward. This, however, means that the shoulders have got to become active in swinging the golf club towards the target, something I'm sure you've heard about before. And often the shoulders aren't active enough. Why? Well, there's a number of reasons for it. One of it could be as simple as your fear of not hitting the golf ball. Intuitively, we think the golf ball is very small and would very much like to hit it, and our brain thinks it would be better if our body stays still and we just do this with the arms. However, unfortunately, that means we have to consciously control how and when the wrist releases to stop it from hitting the ground too early. It also makes an extremely sharp angle of attack, and in most cases, it doesn't work, and you will start to actually spoon and pull your arms in or even stand up so that you don't hit the ground before the ball. Again, all your mates are showering, keep your head down, and what does that help? Not at all, because you just hit the ground. So getting your shoulders to rotate is the answer. However, your shoulders can't rotate if your hips aren't rotating. They are connected to one another, and therefore you have to get some hip rotation going in order to make the shoulder rotation easier get the shoulders and the hips rotating and suddenly you can see a nice brushing of the grass with a deep point after the golf ball. This has to be active and this is where we see problems when people are chipping the golf ball or pitching the golf ball because they are scared to get too active with their shoulders in case the ball goes too far. Most amateur golfers will tend to take too much backswing and break into the ball. And the moment you start to slow down, the forces of nature are releasing this angle. And if you started with a decent address position, you're hitting the ground. So you can't allow yourself to slow down until you've hit the golf ball, which means accelerating the golf club through the ball by accelerating your hip and your shoulder rotation. It's quite simple if you think about it. The depth of your swing is created by the releasing of your wrist and trail arm angles. However, the swing and the depth of your swing is also influenced by the rotation of your shoulders and with that, the swing of your arms out towards the target. That is more than anything else going to decide where the deep point in your swing is and that is what you've got to try and get drilled into all parts of your golf swing, even putting. You've got to make sure that you are accelerating the club through the ball so that this ulnar deviation cannot in any way cause you to, to catch the ground before you hit, you've hit the golf ball. Fortunately, in putting, the club is so, so upright that you probably don't have very much radial deviation in your wrist in the address position, so it's difficult to catch the ground, but the principle is exactly the same. Can you change it with ball position? Yes, of course you can influence it with ball position, but really we want to be influencing the low point in the swing through the action of the arms 
the, at the hands and the shoulders more than we want to be moving the ball around constantly in order to control this. And if you're trying to make a repetitive golf swing, then the deepest point in the swing should be more or less the same every time. Then you can change the angle of attack by moving the ball position. So again, try and just get back to the basics of how your arms and hands are working together with your shoulders, how your shoulders are working together with your hips and your legs. And if you understand these basics, you will start to understand and control the deepest point in your golf swing, which is, if not the most important fundamental, one of the most important fundamentals in making a good golf shot and getting good energy transfer onto the golf ball so that the golf ball actually starts to do a lot of the things you want it to do. I'll probably be talking about this a lot more in future, future videos. I've talked about it in the past. I'll talk about it in the future. If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that little like button. It helps the channel a lot. If you would like to support the channel, I have a Patreon site. Thank you very much to all the patrons to the site. It really does help me to get back here and see you all a little bit more often. Until the next time, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.